In this tutorial we will introduce Action Editor, creating both simple form navigation as well as more complex conditional operations along with animation. Iris allows us to create rich dynamic applications as opposed to simple static prototypes, and Actions helped us bring interactivity to these applications with Action Editor users can associate complex action sequences to events to achieve interaction experiences without having to write any code. Let's get started I've already created a project with three forms. These are right now static forms with no interactivity, while touching the signup button, the application should navigate to the registration form, allowing the user to create a new account. We can bring in that interactivity by right-clicking on the sign-up button and associating an action sequence to the on-click event. Notice that it opens the action editor which has a set of predefined actions grouped under logical headings. Let's associate the navigate to form action all the configurable properties for any action are shown in the bottom pane, we have now associated an action to navigate from the registration form. On clicking the new user button, similarly we can navigate the user to the login form on click of the signup button and navigate to the registration form on the click of join now button on the login form. Complex conditional logic using action editor. With Action Editor we can also create complex conditional logic without having to write any code on my registration form. I want to do three things. I want to ensure that the two password fields match. I don't know ensure that a valid email address is entered, and I want to ensure our first name is entered for registration. We can achieve these validations using conditional operations. Let's associate an action sequence to the on text change event of the confirm password text box. We can also do this from the action tab on the property sheet. Let's create an if condition to validate the text of a password and confirm the password fields. If the condition evaluates the false let's set the skin of the confirm password to indicate an error indenting the action associates it with the corresponding condition. On the else condition let's remove the styling we applied and also set the visibility of the OK image to true, we can copy the action pasted under the else condition and change the values. So in summary I've created a conditional operation that compares the text in the password fields, if they do not match I'm displaying an error message by setting an error skin of the confirm password text field, if they match I'm sending a confirmation skin and displaying a check icon. Let's also create an action sequence for the validation of the email address. Let's associate this action to the on text change event of the email address text box. Notice that I have configured an if condition with an expression which checks the validity of the email address with a regular expression match. If it is valid we can set the visibility of the OK image to true else this can be set to false. Dynamic animation using action editor. Again with Action Editor let's also create the dynamic native animation, let's just say that if the first name is not entered a message should be shown to the user indicating the error, and it slides from the top of the screen. Let's associate an action sequence to the on-click event of the registration button. First name is not empty then we will hide the error container, else we will set the visibility of the error container to true set the error message on the container and associate a move animation so that the container slides from the top of the screen. App Preview Now that we've configured all these action sequences let's see how the application runs in App Preview. I'm clicking Sign In we are taken to the Login page, and on clicking the Join Now button we are taken to the Registration page. Email validation is being performed. Password and Confirm Password match is completed and the first name is made mandatory for registration, that concludes this tutorial. Please refer to Volt MX documentation for more information.